Hey, Sean here from P2R. Today I wanted to focus on um, a little bit of our uh, CNC cylinder head porting program. And I also wanted to get back where we left off on the exhaust rockers and uh, intake rockers, actually the aluminum rockers to be exact. I wanted to get back and show you some more of that. So everybody knows when you're talking about cylinder head porting, there's pretty much one thing people think about. Try to get more flow. Obviously we flow test it. Try to get as much flow as we can out of the cylinder heads. However, there's so much more to it than that. And I, today I wanted to just show people some of the benefits of using our CNC porting program than just actually getting them ported by anybody else. Because we've spent a lot of R&D and a lot of time developing a whole overall package, a complete total package. So the very first step I wanted to talk about is the valve guides. Here we have the Ferrara valve guide, which is a very nice guide. This is what we sell on our website. And you know, if you buy guides from us, this is what you're gonna get. Very nice, you know, really good quality Ferrara valve guide. However, if you get a set of cylinder heads from us, we actually make separate guides for both the intake and the exhaust. We have our intake guide, which we've already pre-put a bull nose taper on it. And we've also put even put a stop on it. So when we install our valve guides, they're always gonna be installed at the exact same height every time. This bull nose matches our intake port, so it's gonna be optimal for the flow on our intake uh, pro program. Same, we've done on the exhaust guides. We've did a different bull nose because we wanna support the valve a little bit more. And we also have a stop here, so we're getting our exact installed height for our spring to make sure the retainer never crashes into your guide. And we've also made the guides a little longer. So we're actually able to create a little more support for the valve. For you big horsepower guys, it's gonna, you know, Really, really, our heads come with everything set up. Now, when you go ahead and you put a stop on a guide, your spring seat will no longer sit in place. So, we've got you covered there too. We've made custom spring seats for that are particular for our setup. So when you have, this is your guide, the spring seat actually suctions right over the stop we put in place. So now your guide can never fall through the cylinder head and it can never push up either because the spring base is gonna always hold it down in place and the stop on the guide is gonna never allow it to drop out of the head. So, I mean, we've, we've developed a really good program with all of that. Now, before I get into any more of the actual parts that we've done for the heads, let's get back to the aluminum rockers. What I have here first, again, these are your steel rockers for the exhaust. The exhaust we'll start with again because it's very simple. There is no VTEC on the exhaust. So I think the only J series that has VTEC on the exhaust is the J37A4. However, this here is a J32A2 cylinder head that we CNC ported. This particular one has the SuperTech springs retainer and valve combo. I'm gonna go ahead and show you. So the first thing we have is our exhaust rocker shaft. These go down like this, however, Let's go ahead and put the rocker, the stock exhaust rockers. So typically when you're assembling this, you have the factory spring and then you have your rocker. And as you see, it's, it doesn't just fall in place. You have to actually squeeze this in to get it down. Now that squeeze that you, you put on there makes these rockers pretty stiff to rotate, right? So you have a lot of friction generated between the cylinder head and the actual rocker itself. That's okay, Honda developed it to be that way, but you do have some friction there, so there's a little bit of, I guess you can call it valve train horsepower loss, right? So here, we worked at Ferrera, and we've made an exhaust rocker bushing. This will actually replace that spring. So if I take this back apart, I pull the spring out, I'll put in the Ferrera exhaust bushing, You'll see when we go down now, this falls right into place and these just move so much freer now. They literally just move and they fall in the exact position. So now, even this spins, we've eliminated a lot of friction that you would normally get with the stock spring. So if you eliminate this and put the Ferrera, what we call it, the exhaust uh, rocker bushing, you reduce some friction. So that's a really good thing. Now we only have these for the steel rockers at the moment, but now I'm gonna go and switch over to the exhaust, to the aluminum rockers. Let's take this back apart. Now one key note with the aluminum rockers is, you never wanna have aluminum against aluminum on a cylinder head. 
because of the heat generated, it's just gonna turn aluminum to basically mush and you're gonna end up season it up. So you have to make sure you use these steel shims that Honda makes. So when you, you gotta make sure and use that. So we'll put the shim on first, we'll then put a rocker, put another shim, then you'll put your spring. So you're, yeah. Actually, you don't probably don't need two shims. You probably don't need an inside shim, but we're gonna go ahead and keep that there for now. Then you put your other, well, you need your shim first, I'm sorry. Rocker. And your shim. And you basically put that into place. For simplicity's sake of this video, I'm gonna just take the spring out so I don't have to squeeze it down. And we'll get this put into place quite easily here. Just gonna rest it down so I can get this out of the way and we can switch over to the intake side. All right, so there we go. We got our exhaust rockers put in place. Intake side, a little bit more complicated because the intake side has VTEC. Um, put the cam in position. With the intake side, because it's a VTEC engine, there's actually three lobes on your on your rockers. You got your two primary lobes and then you have your VTEC lobe. So essentially when an engine is running out of VTEC, you're always running on these two outer lobes, which Honda would have their two smaller camshaft lobes there. And what Honda does essentially is sends oil pressure up into the rocker shaft and that will then shift the pin. There's a pin in here. This pin will come out and it would lock all three of these together and force you to ride on the biggest camshaft lobe, which is the center lobe on the cam. When you're on that lobe, it's basically when you're in VTEC. So if we were to take these three rockers and we put them next to the aluminum rocker, you'll notice that this is centered on it. By being centered, we're always riding on the actual VTEC lobe. And that's why this is basically a VTEC killer because we no longer have a VTEC engagement. We're always on the actual VTEC lobe itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put this on. Let me make sure which direction this is gonna go. And there, yeah. So same here. You're gonna to wanna to go ahead and put a sh the shim in first. Slide your rocker on. Slide in your next shim. And this pretty much just falls right into place. Now, right now, mine's not actually falling into place. It's because I actually had one other part here I wanted to show you. This is our lost motion assembly that we sell. This only works, the well, lost motion assembly is basically for VTEC only. So these would work with the steel rockers that we had. But in this case, we're removing the steel rockers. So we wanna actually take out this lost motion assembly. Now, one trick, because now we have three empty lost motion assembly pockets, which basically, if you're not using the VTEC, can be just, pockets of pools of oil, which essentially can just heat up and you have a, a, a boiling bath of oil in there. So one good trick is to come in here and drill a small hole right at the bottom of your lost motion pocket if you're gonna be eliminating the VTEC, okay? So once that lost motion assembly is actually taken out of the head, this will then fall down into place just fine, just right, okay? The cool thing today, I actually have an actual VTEC killer cam in this engine or in this cylinder head here that uh, BC, Brian Crower made for us, particularly here at P2R. Uh, we're gonna be, this is a prototype cam. We're gonna be releasing that camshaft in the near future. But uh, for the video's sake, it works out perfect. So we essentially got the rocker that's always in VTEC all the time. When you do the aluminum rockers, which we have a whole package on the website, you have to use the these rocker shafts have to be from the non-VTEC cylinder head as well. Because what I mentioned before, the oil, the oil in holes are actually different for just supplying oil to the rocker so it doesn't seize up versus trying to supply oil through to engage the VTEC. So we have to basically use the right rocker shaft when you're using the, rock, the aluminum rockers. So, I mean, I think that's pretty straightforward here. I just wanted to show you guys a couple more things on the, on the cylinder head program. We recently did a couple of cylinder heads. These are our bronze valve seats. These go at the bottom of the cylinder head and these are allow you to basically to get 
bigger valves installed in the head. So we rest this to the side. I'm rest this one to the side. And if I flip this head over, because this head actually has a set of valves in it. Can't quite see because the valves are installed, but right under the valve, there's actually a steel ring that sits basically in the head. By using our bronze one, we're able to actually open up the throat area bigger to get more airflow coming through. And then we put actual bigger seat so that the valve itself has a bigger area, bigger surface area to land on. Essentially a valve can never land on aluminum because the valve opening and closing all the time, if it's landing on the aluminum, it's gonna eventually mess it up, you know, being that the valve is steel. That's the advantage of using this. Here, this is a standard. Most J-Series are gonna be a 35 or 36 millimeter intake valve. This here is a 36 millimeter. That basically is the standard size. With this, we don't have to install any seats or anything like that. We can go ahead and cut a nice valve job for the actual stock seats that are already there, and we can seat it perfectly. If you look at these, these are seated absolutely perfect. Um, outside of that, I mean, it's pretty exciting. I mean, I wanna show you guys some more in the next video as far as this actual camshaft that we got here from BC. This cam has just the primary lobes for the intake. The other two lobes have been grinded off completely. So this camshaft is about, I think I weighed in the stock cam at about five pounds per cam and this camshaft weighed in about 2.3 pounds. So we're actually taking quite a bit of weight off the rotating assembly here. And we also increased the actual VTEC lobe. This thing runs like, it literally almost hits the lost motion assembly pocket. I mean, this is the absolute max you're gonna fit in one of these cylinder heads without actually having to drill open the, the, the actual bore circle or doing a line hone on the cylinder heads. So I'll show you guys more in the cam in the near future after we do some dynos and get some horsepower numbers on them. But this is the VTEC killer cams. This is our CNC head ported cylinder heads. And I showed you guys about the guides and why we have basically a nice combined overall package. Uh, thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys again next time.